Hey yo, what is poppin' ladies and gentlemen, it's Fizz, bringing you guys the OLT Week 1 battle going up against Hiker Toad and the Boston Bulldoors. Now, Hiker is a pretty good pal of mine, I know I've known him for a short amount of time, but overall he's a good dude, but he's a very, very good player, um, easily one of the most recognizable coaches in the community as a whole. Um, he's in several really strong leagues, such as LD Masters and Hive Mega B, so he's definitely a really good player that's pretty known well throughout the entire community so um, hopefully I can pick up a win against him and I'm kind of glad that I faced him week one just so I can get this really solid player off our hands week one and then I can worry about the rest of the season but I'm um, not saying he's unbeatable I do have uh, my friend Big Daddy Dave the Hiker Slayer helping me in my build so shout out to Dave really good pal of mine and very good player helping, helping me with my prep this week so Really appreciate that and um, yeah man really looking forward to trying to start OLT 1 and 0 um, that's definitely the goal this time and hopefully I can put put up a good fight and of course trying to get the W but yeah I'm gonna jump right into Hiker's team he has a Landorus Eye which is Sheer Force, Jirachi, Weavile, Azumarill, Komo, -Oh, Gengar, Heliolus, Gizard Y and the Victory Bell so he has a little Sun Core right there with the Victory Bell, Heliolus, Gizard Y, Heliolus obviously gets Solar Power and Victory Bell gets a double speed but um, yeah, Zard Y is incredibly threatening against my team. I don't have very good switch-ins. Um, well, I do have decent switch-ins, but I really need to play my cards correctly so I just don't lose to Zard Y, you know, what I, you know what I mean? But even with the Zard Y, the rest of his offense is terrifying. Like, Rachi, Lando, Weavile, Azu, Komo, -Oh, Gengar, like, everything on his team is like pretty much hyper offense, and I don't have enough defensive checks to play around that, so... Yeah, my game plan right now is to try to not lose to his Sun Core and just kind of out-offense him. Um, I think that's going to be the best play. But one thing I did notice in building, his hazard removal is actual anus. His hazard removal is the Lando I and the Zard X, or the Zard Y rather. So if I get those rocks up immediately, that's going to be so good for me. And that's exactly what I'm going to be planning to do in this matchup. But yeah, he has a very hyper-offensive team and I'm trying to... Trying to pick up the dub here, and I'm gonna jump right into my team. First off, I have the Mellowed Up Pirouette, which looks incredible against him because Hyper Offense is not gonna be doing well against Mellowetta, man. I'm, I'm a, I have a Life Orb, um, not a traditional set, but I do have a Life Orb just for that extra damage. Knock off, Drain Punch, Return, and Skill Swap. Um, drain Punch, or my Dual Stab, kind of rips apart his team completely. Um, he obviously has some things I can switch into, like Como, -Oh, but Return does more than Ice Punch, and I outspeed pretty much everything on his team. Um, except for the Weavile, which I'm not too worried about outspeeding because he just kills me, or he doesn't kill me, he just hits me hard with a move, I drain punch back, get all my health back, so I'm not too worried about speed creeping Weavile, and what this means is that I get a lot of extra bulk on my team, so I'm able to take like a banded Aqua Jet from Azu or something like that, maybe a Lando hit potentially if it's Scarfed, Scarfed Jirachi, maybe, I don't know, just extra bulk is really nice for me to have, but I have Dual Stab on there and Knock Off obviously for the Gengar, I don't think it can really live like through Colbert um, past after rocks. So that's going to be really nice. And knocking off items is going to be incredibly good for his team, whittling down the Jirachi because that's going to be looking to his defensive Pokemon in this matchup. And uh, I have skill swap on here. First of all, I did not need another move. I really didn't. U-turn didn't really do much for me. Like momentum was fine, but um, I don't really need momentum in this. I just need this thing to hit hard. But what skill swap does for me is with my bulk, I can skill swap the Azumarill. I can get huge power. He takes, what, Serene Grace? Yeah. I live a play rough. And then I can just return everything to death with my huge power. He has no switch in to huge power Meloetta. So I felt like that was pretty heat. And it actually, it actually looks pretty good against his team. Like, um, I didn't really need anything else. Like, I don't know, Heal Bell. Didn't really need any of that. So it felt like skill swap would have been a cool flex for him. And um, yeah, that's really the only thing skill swap is there for. Uh, maybe like tracing chlorophyll. I don't, I don't know if that would be useful ever. But yeah, either way, skill swap is there for the zoom roll. And I like this Meloetta set. Kind of rips apart his team. So uh, yeah, really good stuff there. Next up, I needed one of my first Zard Y checks or switch ins. Um, I have my regular Dynasty Max Bedep with a Rindo. Obviously, you can predict this in going to Solar Beam, but. Um, into the, the Diancy, but the thing is I need to bring two Zard Y checks um, Because he can easily just predict my Diancy switch in and solar beam on the switch in and then I get bodied by another solar beam So don't really want that. So that's why I'm bringing Incineroar as well um, I have Trick Room, Diamond Storm, Moonblast, and Earth Power 
So I'm three attacks, trick room here. It's not an offensive set. This is just for me to use speed control against his team. The only thing that doesn't really care about speed is his Aqua Jet Azu that outspeeds everything on my team. But his slowest Pokemon is the Azumarill, but it's gonna be clicking Aqua Jet, so. Um, either way, Dynasty is really good in case um, Como sets up to Blast One. I can take any hit, or most hits. I can take any hit from like Victory Belt, set up uh, my Trick Room, and hit pretty decently hard with the Diamond Storm, or my Dual Stab and Earth Power. Earth Power is there for Jirachi, didn't really need the other move. Um, if I whittle down Jirachi enough, which I think it will be definitely whittled down, um, I can pick it off with Earth Power potentially. And yeah, in general, Trick Room is just going to be really clutch against his team, because his team is really fast. Don't really want to deal with chlorophyll so i have trick room on this pokemon which is really nice so um yeah straightforward dynasty set don't really need much more explanation for that it's one of my zardoi switch ins and next up i have a pretty fizz def ray nicholas with colber um i have trick room psychic focus blast and recover um so another trick room mon if i wanted trick room on my dynasty i think it would be good for me to have trick room on my ray nicholas as well what this does is allows me to pivot into um certain things like i can switch into como um, decently well because I'm very very physically bulky I can take a Azumarill hit if it's not like banded um, and I can trick him up psychic back but I wasn't too happy about this set I felt like it wasn't very good in the matchup but I really liked Ray Nicholas in general just to be able to switch into Como O and put off the pressure against the rest of my team like Dynasty I don't want that thing taking chip from Como um, Ray Nicholas is gonna be taking all the hits from Como so in general stuff like that is really nice for Ray Nicholas to be on the team, but a lot of Fizz Def and a lot of Special Attack. Solid chunk invested into that, but yeah, Trick Room, Psychic, and Focus Blast is really all I need. I could have Signal Beam on it, but I really wanted to pressure Jirachi as hard as possible, and of course recover it because I want to stay alive. Next up, I have my second um, Zardui check. Now, this isn't really a check because he can easily get up rocks, and then that's going to be a problem. He can two-shot him with Focus Blast. Well, probably not, but um, yeah, this is really good for me because... Um, Spadef is really good for Victory Bell. Victory Bell can obviously 1v1 my Diancy, but this thing can take on the Victory Bell pretty decently well. He's not going to be running physical as I do have an Incineroar with in Intimidate, stuff like that. So I'm not really expecting him to be like SDP jab or anything like that. And um, yeah, this this can switch into my the Zardex and the Victory Bell really, really well. can also switch into the Gengar and I can take two Focus Blasts on Zard Y um, out of rocks, of course. And I'm really, really Spadef and AV, of course. And U-Turn is really, really good for me because I can switch into Charizard Y. I can Flare Blitz it, do over half to it every single time, which is really, really good. So it can't really set up, or not set up, just roost on me all day. Um, it's going to be forced to take Flare Blitz chip. Now, it was a last second decision between T-Punch and Flare Blitz, but back to the point. I pressure Zard Y out is what I'm trying to say. So I can U-Turn on the Zard Y. Force it to take rocks even more, and then I can go into my Meloetta to whatever he switches into, because he doesn't have switch-ins to Meloetta, so I can get a free U-turn into the Meloetta every time, which is going to be really nice for me. Knocking off items is going to be so good for me, knocking off Zs, Scarfs, anything in general, knockoff is going to be really good, very spammable against this team. Um, and also a fake out on there, because I didn't really need anything else. Um, Victory Bell only gets 5 turns of sun, because of Zard Y, obviously can't hold the, like, the sun extension item, whatever that thing's called. So Fake Out is really good sun control right there. And I feel like it's useful to, um, I don't know, like break a sash or something against his team. I feel like that's really good. Um, and especially since his team is so frail, like Revile, Lando, Heliolus, those things aren't very bulky. So I can Fake Out for some really nice ship and then you turn out whatever I want to do with Incineroar. So yeah, this is my second Zard Y check and a Victory Bell switch in. Next up, I have my Rocker, which is Sash, Sagmatoad, Stealth Rock, Sludge Wave, Scald, and Toxic. Now, um, st Stealth Rock, obviously very, very important in this matchup. I'm very spadef as well. Stealth Rock, I'm just going to be leading this every single time. He doesn't, um, he's not going to be carrying Taunt, especially, or not especially, except on like Gengar or something, but he could definitely lead something with Taunt and Taunt my rocks. So that's fine by me because I can just Scald it next turn or whatever I want to do. And um, I have Sludge Wave on there just to hit the Zoom roll, so I'm not complete setup fodder. And I can switch into Aqua Jet, so this gives me an immunity to Aqua Jet. So if he wants to pick off something like my Thundee, I can play around that by going into Side and Toad, etc. And I'm Sash, of course, so I can live any hit from full. So Sludge Wave is only there for the Zoom roll. I don't want to be setup fodder for that. Skull is very, very spammable against his team. 
Zard Y can take it, but again, his hazard removal sucks. So after rocks plus skull, it's going to be taking a lot of chip. And nothing wants to switch into skull. Like, nothing wants to get burned. Gengar takes a chip takes a chunk from Scald, but can get burned, etc. Toxic is also really nice to whittle down his team. So something like the Azumarill, Weavile, Como in general, they get Toxic and they're kind of put out the game. So yeah, I focus Ash on there as well, just so I can just guarantee to get rocks up because they're that important to me. Um, he can lead with like Gengar or something, taunt me, and then I don't know. But yeah, I just want to get guaranteed rocks up. I need to get those bitches up, man. So Sash rocks is the easiest way for me to get them up reliably. Toxic was kind of filler, didn't really need it, but yeah, this is really good for me. I really like Sash rocks here in this matchup because getting rocks up is gonna be so big for me. But uh, yeah, jumping into the last mod on my team, I have the Thundy T with Fight Z, t Bull, HP, Ice, Focus Blast, and Nasty Plot. So he doesn't have the best switchins to Thundy Eye. In the first place, his best switchin is probably like, I don't know, uh, Lando, I guess, but it could be Scarf, I don't know. Don't really know what his switchin is to Thundy or what his, what his plan is around Thundee. But uh, yeah, T-Bull HP Ice covers everything on his team and Focus Blast is really good just so I can have a nice middle ground for something like the Como-O and the Jirachi. I can Z fight um, as a really hard way to hit everything neutrally on his team and didn't really think I needed another item. Life Orb, I didn't really think it was very good in this matchup. So I feel like a Z move was really good. So fight Z, hit everything neutrally really, really well. So I felt like Plus two Z fight kind of just claims alive. So yeah, in general, just pretty straightforward Thundee set. Nothing much to be explained. But um, yeah, I felt like I have a really good team. I felt like I covered his mom pretty well. So yeah, really excited to get into this game and let's see how we fared against Hiker Toad. And we are here with a battle against Hiker. Good luck, have fun, of course. Trying to start off old T strong. Like always, he brings a team consisting of the Zard Y, Lando, I, Ooh, bars. Uh, Rachi, Azumarill, Gengar, and the Como. So everything I expected. No Victory Belt is pretty good for me. Because that means Incineroar has a really good time. Just pivoting around against his team. Doesn't have to switch into anything specifically. And this means that I felt like Zard Y isn't going to be like destroying my team. Because a lot of pressure has been taken off in Incineroar. But uh, right now he doesn't have removal unless he has it on Lando. Which can be possible. Not really expecting him to bring removal at all. But... He could definitely bring it, but that means he has to waste an extra slot on Zard or the Lando for Defog, which is fine, fine by me. So, again, the plan is just to lead Side Method and get up my rocks. And he leads a Gengar, which is really good for me. Just so I know I don't die to anything that he can throw at me and I can get at my rocks. Except, um, he goes for Energy Ball. I mean, good bring on his end. And I go for the Skull. Um, my thought process on this turn was like, okay, he's gonna taunt me, I can get some nice chip, but I don't need chip on Gengar for anything at all. Like, everything is in range, or like, even at full, Gengar's in range of like everything on my team. So don't know why I scalded there, I was thinking, oh, I can, I can predict the taunt or anything, or something like that. But, I have my Sash intact, you know, so if he taunts me, I just switch out. And I still have my Sash intact. He's going to be like Rocks Rachi or something like that. So I can bring it in before that and keep my Sash. And then get up Rocks eventually. So um, I basically sacked my Sag Matilde here. Nothing can switch in on this Gengar. So I have no Rocks up on the field, which is so bad for me. What a huge misplay on my end, quite honestly. So he goes into his Como. And that reveals to be Z. And as I reveal my Life Orb. Return is just going to be my best Metal Ground. Because I don't want him to set up. Plus, I predict him to get up Rocks. Because that reveals to be pretty fat. Um, well, it doesn't reveal to be pretty fat. I just kind of wanted to get damage on that thing. So right here, I go for the skill swap. Hopefully it works. He goes for liquidation, does 28. So yeah, Azu without huge power is a huge unmon, but now I have huge power. So something's dying to a turn. As he goes into his Jirachi, he takes 58. <laughs> he takes 58 from a Mellow does return. That's insane to me. So I feel like I can just kill it, but he actually goes for the Iron Head and crits me. Depending on if he was offensive or not, it matters, but right here, Scarf Rachi caught me off guard so, so badly. Because I felt like, you know, huge power Meloetta could have really put a huge dent into his team. He kills a Como, kills something else. He's forced to bring in Azumarill and Aqua Jet. So it could have taken down two Mons right there, which would have been really good for me, but Scarf Rachi was a very interesting pick here. Um, I imagine Scarf Rachi was only there just to get fast momentum, being able to get some chip on the Melo to chip me down and put in range of something like a zoom roll. But um, yeah, depending on, depending on the set, uh, 
I died with the crit. So what I'm trying to say, the crit may or may not have mattered. I don't think it will be offensive just because it has a really hard time breaking through like Thundi, Seismitoad, um, Incineroar, stuff like that. Delmize as well can kind of take a lot of hits from it. So don't really think offensive Scarf was probably the play. I think it was going to be a pretty reliable or a pretty fat Scarf route. And that's what caught me off guard. I didn't think it'd be Scarf if it was fat, but looking back on it, fat Scarf kind of made sense. I don't know if it was fat, but I'm assuming if it, I'm, I'm assuming it is. At this point, that's a lot of rambling. I'm just gonna move on. So I'm down five to three, or I'm down five to four. And right here, I go for my nasty plot predicting the switch into Lando. Don't think he'll bring double scarf, but he ends up bringing double scarf. So I died to a rock slide. Um, my fault for not scouting that, but I didn't really have a switch in at that point anyway. So I went for the HPI there on that turn, obviously. But right here, I go for my trick room. I go for my psychic, and he brings in a Drachi, of course. I go for psychic again, trying to predict him to burn um, turns of trick room with Gengar by switching it into the Focus Blast. But I don't think he would have done that in Hunter because I could have had Shadow Ball very easily. So yeah, I go switch out into my Incineroar because I need Rain Nicholas alive to be able to trick room on something else and do work. So he goes for Solar Beam here, predicting my dying seed. That's why I have Incineroar and that's really nice for me. As you can see, I do exactly 50 to him with my Flare Blitz. I obviously live the Focus Blast. Would have been nice if he missed it or if he missed this one, but he goes for the Solar Beam, makes a safe play, kills my Incineroar. Would have been really nice if he missed that because something dies to a Flare Blitz, which would have been sick. But he, go I go into my Dying Seed, get up my Trick Room um, in, a, in the last effort to kind of win me the game. Um, I kill something with Diamond Storm, but he goes into the Jirachi. Um, he goes into the Jirachi to sack it. I think that was his best play. I go for the Moon Blaster to pick it off. Didn't want to risk Moonblast missing, or Diamond Storm missing, because at plus, like, whatever, I could have led the Nazi hit, but at this point, he wins the game because he belly drummed up and gets his Eye Papa Barrier back, and he goes for the Aqua Jet, kills, kills off my Dying Seed, <clears throat> and he ends up killing my Rain Necklace with a Liquidation, so good game to Hiker, man. I really, really misplayed that turn one. I felt like Rock 2 would have been so good because Zard would have died. I would have at least had differential back, you know? Um, Gengar, I don't know, just ship in general on his team would have been really good for me. I wouldn't say it won the game for him, but me misplaying really sucked because I could have lowered differential, etc. Because starting off um, this, starting off the first week, 0 and 1 minus 4 is not a good thing for me. So, yeah, in general, I felt like my prep was really good, um, but I didn't play well. That first turn kind of screwed me over. It was my fault. <coughs> I'm back. But, um, yeah. Could have played that better. Didn't really know what I could do past the turn three or whatever, where I misclicked on not misclicked, misplayed on the rocks turn. Oh my god, I'm dying. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So uh, yeah, next up we play Saint and the Iowa State Cyclones. Hopefully we can pick up our W there, first W of the season. Trying to go one and one, of course. Trying to make playoffs, all that good stuff. So yeah, again, GG to Hiker. Hopefully we meet each other in playoffs if we do get there. But uh, yeah, man, thank you guys so much for watching. It means well to me. And like always, have a swell day. Peace.